A river is a type of habitat. A habitat is a place where animals live. This place where animals live has to offer food, water, shelter, clean air, and enough space for them to live and bring up their babies. In a river habitat, animals that live there are called aquatic animals because they live in or near the river. So aquatic animals like this animal right here live underneath the water or some of them live either under the water and above the water or some might live just above the water but they need to have water in order to survive. This aquatic animal is a snapping turtle and the snapping turtle lives most of its life under the water until it comes to the surface to grab a breath of air. It breathes air from the oxygen in the air and cannot breathe underwater. Instead, he holds his breath when he goes underneath the water. Snapping turtles come to land to lay their eggs. Their eggs are circular and are buried under the soil and the little babies, only the size of a quarter, hatch out and find water on their own when they hatch. They find the water and they emerge themselves under the water with the fish and all the other animals that live below the surface of the water. Here you're looking at fish and the plant life in an underwater habitat, an aquatic habitat in a river. Animals like fish breathe through gills on the side of their body so they have to stay underneath the water all the time. The gills allow them to catch the oxygen that's in the water. The plants that are in the water offer more oxygen for them and it also offers them a place to hide. Plants are important for other animals that live underneath the water as well. If you look closely, you can see some snails that are attached to the stems on these plants. Snails and other types of insects often use plants as their food or as a place to hide from predators such as fish that might come around and eat them if they're not careful. Some insects live their entire lives underneath the water like this water beetle, but some insects live part of their lives under the water and part of their lives above the water like these water striders. There are many insects that need the water for their babies to grow in before they can emerge as adults. Another animal that requires water but can also come out of the water is a crayfish. A crayfish is a freshwater crustacean, so that means that he has a shell that covers his entire body. Because he has that shell, his gills, which help him breathe underwater, stay moist when he comes out of the water. So he can be out of the water for a short period of time, but he will have to work his way back to the water to make sure that he can start breathing again once he returns underneath the water. Crayfish are pretty durable animals to be able to live inside and outside of the water. Frogs are another type of aquatic animal. Frogs spend most of their time in the water, but they can live out of the water as well. They have to stay near water so that they can keep their skin from drying out because they don't have any scales to cover their skin like a reptile would. Frogs find their food in the water and they are able to escape predation when they're in the water easier than when they're on land. They have long legs that help them to jump and escape predation if a predator is nearby. The water gives them the safety to be able to escape from those predators. The water is also where they lay their eggs. Because it's their habitat, their babies are raised in the water 
and that's where tadpoles live their entire lives until they become adults. Dragonflies, on the other hand, are in the water as babies, but when they become adults, they spend their entire lives outside of the water. Dragonflies and frogs both go through what's called metamorphosis. They both start as eggs in the water, as you can see this dragonfly laying eggs along this plant in the water. When the eggs hatch, they become a nymph. A nymph spends its entire part of its life underneath the water. And then when it's finally ready to become an adult, it climbs up on the stem of a plant, sheds its skin for the last time, and exposes its wings so that it can fly and live the rest of its life as an adult in the air, not in the water. However, dragonflies still need to live near water so they can lay more eggs and continue their life cycle. There are other animals like aquatic birds that don't live underneath the water, but that's where their food lives. So they need to stay near water in order to survive. Like this great blue heron. The great blue heron is a bird with very long legs that it uses to wade in shallow water and wait for fish to come through its legs so it can reach down into the water with its long beak and grab hold of the fish that it uses for its food. Great blue herons need to make their nests near a river so they can feed fish to their babies. For such a big bird, it's a surprise to see them nest high up in a tree, but they often share that tree with other great blue herons. This is called a rookery. Another bird that spends its time near a river is called a belted kingfisher. The belted kingfisher uses its long beak to dive into the water and catch fish. Kingfishers will perch somewhere near the water and watch until a fish comes by. Then they dive into the water and hopefully they catch a fish, which will become their meal. They eat the fish whole. Kingfishers make their nests in the mud along the riverbanks. They use their long beaks and feet to dig a hole so they can keep their babies safe. Another bird that lives along the river is called the cliff swallow. A cliff swallow is a bug eater. So that's exactly what they do is eat the bugs that float above the river. Cliff swallows are excellent flyers and they can maneuver their bodies all over to chase a bug in flight. They're able to fly at all sorts of angles to catch those bugs. They're also able to fly right along the top of the water in case an insect falls into the water and they can catch it from there. If you look carefully, you can see all of the swallows flying above the water in this scene. Many of the swallows fly in the same area and catch their food in that same area because they use the river as their habitat and build their nests right along the river. You can see the baby cliff swallows looking out of their nests that they build from mud that they take from the riverbank. Many cliff swallows will nest in colonies, so there are a lot of nests all together and they're able to find their food and raise their babies in safety in a colony. Another bird that lives along the river is the bald eagle. The bald eagle lives here so it can find its fish in the river. It uses its long talons to grab the fish out of the river and brings it back to a perch where it will eat the entire fish. Fish are very important for eagles to use as their food source. It's not their only food, but it's the main source of food that they use. They use that fish in order to feed their babies. This is why the eagle needs to make its nest close to an area where there's water. 
Those baby eagles need to eat at least every three hours. Even as they grow bigger, mom and dad continue to find fish for them and bring that fish back to those babies until they get to be big enough to fly away. Another type of aquatic bird is the Canada goose. A goose is a type of waterfowl, like a duck. They spend most of their time on the water or on the shoreline near the water. This is where they are safest. They find most of their food in the water, but they're also able to find food along the ground on the shoreline. They'll eat plants, but they also eat insects and other things that they find along the ground and in the water. Just like all these other birds that we've been discussing, the geese make their nest near the water because this is where they find their food, but differently from the other birds, this is where their babies will end up going as soon as the babies are hatched. Geese have babies that are ready to swim as soon as they are hatched out of their eggs. So mom will lead those babies down into the water and the babies are safer when they're in the water than when they're on land. The babies do go on land, but mom and dad stay very close by and watch over them and protect them from any type of predators. Predators like the otter. The otter is an aquatic mammal. He's a mammal that lives in the water and on the shoreline near the water. Otters spend most of their time in the water where they look for fish. Once in a while, they might try to eat a baby goose when it's very tiny, but fish are their primary source of food. Otters like fish so much that they can eat up to two to three pounds of fish every day. That's a lot of fish. Otters need to spend a lot of their time fishing, but one thing that I love about otters is that they like to play. They're one of the only animals that plays just for the fun of it. Otter babies are super cute too. They're able to swim when they're very young. They stay close to mom and they learn how to fish by watching mom. They also learn how to survive by playing with their brothers and their sisters in the water and on the shoreline. Otters are definitely a fun river animal to see in the wild. Another aquatic mammal is the beaver. The beaver is an animal that eats plants and wood for its food, not fish. If you look at this beaver's teeth, you can see that his teeth are bright orange. That's because he is designed to eat the wood from the shoreline trees that grow along the river. Beavers drop the trees into the water of the river and float the trees and branches to their dams and lodges. When they make these dams and lodges, they change the structure of the river. Sometimes they make the river become so wide it looks like a lake. But by making these dams and slowing the river down, getting rid of the rapids, it makes it a little bit easier for the animals that live there to bring up their babies and survive in a river habitat. So the river habitat offers all the things animals need in order to survive. Whether they live below the surface or above the surface, the river poses a challenging habitat to live in, but the animals that live there are able to find what they need and are able to survive.